Hello and welcome to another episode of the world famous Loom, Loom Plotters. And what a riveting topic we have today. World famous. Wow. Mm. We yep. do have some listeners in different parts of the world, that's for sure, right? Uh, Ralph, you want to, you want to, where, where are we famous? Tell us. I, yeah, just let me, just me go more. I, I get this you status update. <laughs> yeah, just a second. I'm pulling it up here. Pot status for, for le- yesterday. We We're are, the number three yeah, and, in Iceland. And, <laughs> no, thank you so much. I mean, as of last day, because they are daily stats, right? We are in the top 20 in Canada. We are in the top 30 in Denmark and in the top 50 in Ireland. And of course, in the UAE and in Switzerland. Switzerland and Poland. Thank you, dear listeners from these countries. Who, it's who is, I, I called them out last time and I said, who on earth is listening from, let's say, Poland? Yeah. Message me or, or, or comment on this because I have no idea who is out there and it'd be nice to know. It would so. be wonderful. And we have so many absolutely amazing um, uh, countries that are just not listed this day where we actually had, um, you know, trending trending things um let me just see if i can find this just to tell you in the in the daily 30 daily top ranks or so something like that 30 days tops top placements so we were on number three in denmark number seven in ireland um of course in the uae in the top 10 and in switzerland in the top 10 that doesn't mean on the 10th place <laughs> but also not in the top five but anyhow you can you but, can but this is once again this is and it changes we also, depending on what day. We also broke into the United States charts, given at the 119th rank, 190th rank. But hey, we actually broke into the top charts of the hobby category. There you go. Of podcasts, Apple Podcasts. This is yes. only on Apple Podcasts. Spotify, we also ranked somewhere, but it's more difficult to, to, to Access, gather yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Ah, so, and what is Apple the rivet? What are you wearing? <clears throat> what are you wearing? A white T-shirt and some khaki shorts. Mm, yes, yeah. uh, gray shorts and a, and a white T-shirt too. So, <laughs> yeah, we both are wearing a V-neck, white plain V-neck. Yes, we are so, uh, so in the Loom Plotters uniform. <laughs> now, if it glue glowed glue in the in the dark, that'd be yeah, even better. We, we need to do that. We need to have uh, our own merch. You know, but as, as successful podcast. We don't have. even need to make our own merch. No? We can just buy somebody's Loom uh, uh, Submariner Loom shirts, right? I have an idea. So why don't don't we do this like we, we are getting to the next level, right? Just merchandise t-shirts, everybody has that. But we are doing personalized like like these um like where every dial is different. We are splattering loom loom paint on the on the t-shirts individually. So, so, so we every just t-shirt buy is white slightly t-shirts. different. <laughs> we buy some white t-shirts, we get some fluorescent like glow in the dark paint. Mm-hmm. We flick the brushes yes. at these white shirts. And everyone's going to be different. Absolutely. And it won't say anything, but it's they're just unique. glow in the dark. We can make a limited edition yeah. and do a drop, mm. a merch drop, right? We'll do 150 shirts yeah, for our 100 you, listeners. You, yeah. <laughs> and when you go into the club and you have this sprinkled shirt, then people think like, so what are these specs on your shirt? Is it if it's bl- uh, if it's black <laughs> white, it, then they're going to just think you're a very biological dirty material. <laughs> <laughs> is it yes. paint? And is it, oh, okay, we are going in a very dangerous. Territory. All right, <laughs> I am wearing today the Cartier Santos medium. So oh, that's dial. a very elegant and watch. It is. Uh, I would say sp- it's elegant. I don't think it's a dress watch. That's the thing is, I think it's more sporty than people give it credit for. Mm, um, on the on the steel bracelet for sure, I think yeah, it's yeah. um it's a uh, it's as uh, <clears throat> Salem always says in our in our watch group, our dear friend he says um, cultured man, wear Cartier right. Yes, that's very man. true. I'm very mm. cultured. Yeah. So, All right, and you. Speaking of that, I am wearing my Glasuto Original Pano Reserve in rose gold with a blue strap. You can't even see that it's blue. It's very dark blue. Is a Hodinky strap? No, you put a Hodinky no, strap? No, not yet, not yet, because I'm waiting for my um uh my spring bar, right? Oh yes, yeah. The I have bars, I have two spring, spring bars. bars. I have the normal spring bars, 19 millimeters coming in today. Probably they will ring the doorbell while we are actually recording, and uh, then of course the quick release ones that come from international, blah blah blah. That will take a couple of yeah, one or two weeks. Okay. Anyhow, so that's uh, that. That's that. 
And we'll see you next time. Yep. <laughs> bye bye. And thanks for listening to our wrist check. The Loom yes, Plotter's wrist minute. check short five minute version. <laughs> All right. So now today's topic is without further ado about grail watches. Yeah. And this is something that everyone has, I'm guessing. Everyone has crossed their mind. I should sell everything and buy that one watch. And it's a very, very sneaky, you know, situation to be in. I, I recently thought about this as well. Like, imagine I could literally take all of my watches. Yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, sell them. Yes. And buy one because uh, somebody was selling or somebody got offered the annual or no, the weekly calendar Patek. Yes. I, I think it was Mahmoud, right? He's always the one that gets offered these things. So the the uh, what is the green <laughs> dial or whatever it is, uh, weekly calendar, stainless steel, Calatrava. Mm. Love that watch. Um, and I thought to myself, this could be a only watch. Yeah. Until it it's be. not, right? And then you sell a bunch of things, you buy that one, and then all of a sudden you're like, well, I still want this, and I still want a sports watch, and I still want this and that. And then you end up with right back where you started. So and uh, and knows? where right where you said yeah that that's that's the one thing that um Mahmoud asked me as well <coughs> when he saw the Patek uh, annual calendar saying like hey does your friend would he accept a trade in you know like can we swap maybe and I thought yeah this is actually if you have something on an equal value um it makes a lot of sense right if if there's two people who saying saying like okay yeah great I want this AP and I have this Patek and we can swap so we can both experience a different watch for a while. You know, yeah. maybe they will swatch ba swap back. Maybe they don't. So it's a, it's just a it's just a yeah. I mean, I, I'm it's slightly annoyed trial. sometimes yeah. when I'm trying to sell something and I I want money. That when people are saying like, "Hey, I can trade your uh, Patek Philippe against a uh, whatever Tesla Model Y," and you think, "What?" <laughs> so no, like, uh, what? we this mm. happens all the time. I was selling a. Uh, God knows what the Oris. Hmm. And, somebody uh, said, and somebody said, Oh, I'll trade you a Nomos. And I'm like, No. Nomos like, is that's nice. not even this. No, it's not. Oh, yeah. The, it the, is. No Depends which one. Nah. <laughs> the no, Club Sport for Neomatic. The, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what it was. It was the Club Sport Neomatic, the blue one. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. But to my Hodinki Limited Edition Caliber 400 Oris Diver. Uh, okay. Like, Maybe nah, that's a bit bro, more expensive. Nah. Yeah. Like so the, the, the Nomos is 10, 10k pre-owned every day, so you get that yes. for 10, 11k. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yes. And then the yeah. Oris was 15k roughly. Mm. Um, what new, new, right? Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Anyway. So I, I, I always have a problem if somebody says like, "Hey, I, I really like your Seiko, but um, I have this great electro scooter," and you think, "Yeah, the uh, you know the the Venn diagrams, so like the the." <laughs> the the people who want to sell a Seiko and want to buy an electro scooter, right? This this you know, how do you say that? This yeah. uh, this part in the middle between the two two circles that actually is um, in German we say the, the Venn yeah, the in the Schnitzel, the sch <laughs> not Schnitzel, but the, the Schnittmenge, so that the, the the part in the middle, um, the overlap, the, the whatever overlap, the, 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 exactly yes. between people who want to sell a Seiko and want to buy an electro scooter. It's very small, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. But, and yeah, but this is what was the the challenge. So, ah, but no, yeah. no, no. I was I was actually contemplating this. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned this because uh, I was thinking to myself, uh, Timepiece three hundred and sixty has this Tudor Black Bay fifty four. We're back to the Black Bay fifty four again, but on the rubber <laughs> strap, and they want ten k for no. it. And I'm thinking to myself, ten oh, k, it's a good deal. What can I? sell essentially to come away with some money and or trade or do something like uh, so I, mm. I have been thinking about this as well um you know just kind of shuffle some things around for for no apparent reason but uh i don't know i think in the end i'm gonna reg you know I, I would regret it one of my thoughts was to sell my date just oh no Be I know everyone says this and I'm like, uh, yeah, but of course. I mean, if you are bored with it, sell it. I'm not bored with it. I'm just like, 
you bored need to in get general, <laughs> in general. <laughs> right? Yeah, see, uh, I, I can and tell I can't, you. I can't put more money towards anything. So yeah, let me tell you the story about my f- a friend of mine. Okay, and, let's yeah, talk about your friend yeah, because it's about Grail watches, right? And it's it's um, he has a wonderful collection with uh, crazy watches, and he just asked me recently. He said, "Okay, listen, listen, I need your advice." I said, "All right, happy to provide." Um, solicited advice that's right not unsolicited but i usually do um and he said okay i have this watch in mind it's a arlangen um double split chronograph roman numerals black dial it's of course i mean if you turn to turn it around it's a chunky watch if you turn it around you see the movement it's in in, incredibly deep. This movement is in 50 million layers, has 400 parts. It's just insanity. You look at the movement and you think, okay, I'm never going to wear this watch with the dial up, always the other way around because it's so beautiful, right? So I said, okay, fine. Which watch are you going to sell for this? And he said, okay, I have two watches that I'm going to sell for it. And one is the white gold Patek Philippe annual calendar 5205G which I like. It's a it's a gray sector dial watch. It's pretty cool. It's one of the stealthiest Patek Philips and it's a beautiful case. I mean, it's just a lovely watch, but relatively nondescript for a Patek. Is that this one and the rose gold Arlange und Söhne time zone. This kind of world timer with the world display and the two different... Uh, it's a, it's a, also a marvel of engineering. And so you have these two watches that are brilliant in its own right. These are Grail watches by themselves. And he has both of them. And he wants to sell them for this one chronograph. And I think both of them have, for me, nicer dials. They have equally, not not the same level of movement. Obviously, chronographs are more complicated, especially double double split. Now, Lange does the triple split triple split it's yes insanity these mm-hmm. movements i mean who am i to judge with uh, philip dufour who said alang and Söhne movements are you know the shit so they are the best things in the world uh, yeah so you can't argue with this but i i said to him if it would be me i would keep the two watches i think these yep. these two watches are nicer nicer complications for me personally not the biggest fan of chronographs. I think that's nice if you if you like chronographs and you want to. Do you have a around. chronograph? Uh, yes, I do. Still have um, the Type Twenty. Oh yes, you do. Yeah, yeah. But I and I the had, Moon Swatch. Had, uh, yeah, <laughs> the Moon Swatch exactly. I, I had a lot of chronographs. I had the Black Bay uh, chronograph from Tudor. The one that I remember I is the Daytona, the, the Prince, or not Daytona, the, the the Zenith, Zenith. You the had the Prince Date. I had that from Tudor as well. I had the. Um, Porsche design one. I had the Zenith, as you said, the D five twenty one El Primero with a one hundredth of a second chronograph. Yeah, great party trick. If you have this second hand that goes in hundredth of a second increments around the dial in one second, it's amazing. But yeah, now I don't have. I have just one, the Type twenty, and I never used the chronograph ever. So I, I think it's so I'm just not a chronograph. I started person. using my chronograph. Yeah, uh, but, but what would you do? You would also much more frequently if you were with this person. Before we go, and you can talk about the chronographs. Okay. But if you would this would be this person, would you change? I mean, the double split. Frankly, is... frankly, what the hell am I going to do with a double split? A, B. <laughs> it's 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 not, it's an unwearably large watch. Mm. Um, sure, it's beautiful, but are you going to put it on the wall? Are you going to look at it? If you're going to look at it, then fine. But uh, I, I this is one of the issues that I always have with these ridiculous watches. Yes, but this is, the, this is the thing. They are unwearable. He is not bored. He is stressed out. His life is now going around like, can I sell it? Can I sell it? Who, who is going to buy this? Should I do it? Should I not do it? Oh, my God. Uh, let me ask more people <clears throat> or, or maybe not even. That. My advice he, would I think be, he, my advice he is decision, but he's try to yeah. sell what you have. Yeah. Try to sell it. If you get the right offers, then it's meant to be. Mm. If you don't get the right offers, mm. then it's not meant to be. True. Yeah. Because there's two ways to do it. If you're on the fence mm. about selling something, then mm. you say, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and see how much people offer me." Yeah, that works. Yeah. So far, the other option is uh, if you make a decision already, then you have a fire sale and you say, "I'm gonna just get rid of these and get as you know as quickly as possible as much money out of it as I can." That's the way I generally sell stuff. I will mark things so cheap 
that no one even negotiates and they just yeah. take it. Yeah, yeah. And that generally tends to work. So for instance, um, of course, on a much lower level, the uh, uh, the Oris that I sold, right? I paid 8K for it. It was a 15K watch new. I paid eight. Yep. Uh, and then I said, you know what? If I put it up for eight, it's going to sit around because I know that I bought it from some guy in the US on Chrono and it sat there and it was on Chrono for quite some time. Mm. Ergo, I put it up for six mm. and it's going to be sold within 24 hours. And exactly that happened. I took the hit for 2K. Why not? At the at, at that point, I wanted to get something else. So I took that 2K hit, said, why not? And I had maybe five offers within a period of 24 hours. Yeah, that's the thing. I think this is usually what I do as well. If I really have something that I want and I know that the price that I wanted, that, uh, that, I, that I'm going to get for it... Um, is is okay it's a good price then I, i need to just liquidate something and i also don't like these week long tire kick oh god and back and like, forth oh, and back oh, and forth and oh so i rather do no a, this is what i said yeah. i said if you wire me the money whoever wires me the money first wins and mm. you know we we had a few nice yeah you know, uh, uh, people from the group that were interested um and they were clamoring over this watch for some reason. <laughs> and and that was the thing is if I would have just said, even if I put it for 7K, there was a chance that people would still come and kick the tires and blah, blah, blah. So do what you think it's worth in, in terms of what it's worth to you. Because if you put it up for 8K, there's a chance you're going to end up selling it for 6K anyway because somebody negotiates. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in, yeah. in so his situation, we have the saying once again, Better a nickel today than a dime tomorrow. True, true, true. So, to a certain extent. So my, my, my friend extent, in this yeah. case says like, okay, this is what I want for this watch. This is my walkaway price. So nobody has offered him that price yet. So it means like, okay. So, but then he, um, after a few days, he said, you know what? Actually, my walkaway is a bit lower. So, <laughs> so these are all six figure watches, right? So yeah so it's not so easy you have to find also these people who are buying these watches right now and of course the and audience. there's not that many of them yeah and summer is a bit of a low period slow period in any case but he has time so he's not in a in a in the biggest of hurries but obviously he also wants to have the other watch and if you have that in your mind i mean you and me are the same as well if we want something we wanted yesterday right yeah exactly and that's that's usually the problem But let's go quickly back. I, I just asked my um, uh, my Jarvis here, my my little uh, AI co-pilot, of what actually is a Grail watch, and AI thinks it's this: a Grail watch is the ultimate timepiece that a collector dreams of owning. It's the one watch they would never sell if they could finally acquire it. While the term originally refers to exceptionally rare and valuable watches, it doesn't necessarily have to be expensive or hard to find. It's more about personal desire and aspiration akin to the legendary Holy Grail. Some collectors spend years or even decades searching for their Grail watch, much like King Arthur's quest to the Holy Grail. So whether it's a vintage reference or a modern limited edition, your Grail watch is uniquely yours. Well, that's a, it's an interesting and nice, <laughs> nice way of putting oh, it's it. It's true. I, I, I agree. That's but, exactly um, what I would say it is. But, <clears throat> and this is the thing, once you have the Grail watch, you claim, when I get this watch, This is it. This is, I will never sell this watch. This is the one watch I will just keep for the rest of my life. But then you have it. Then what? Is it really? Because usually, like with everything in life, the moment you reach a specific level, you get used to it, you aspire to the next one. We are very often not just content with what we have, but always want to have the next big thing. And that's why I think... You need to have a bit of stoicism, a bit of um, maturity in your life to say, no, that's fine. That's it. That's okay. that's what I want. And that's um, where I stay. Um, I'm on the other end mm. uh, on ChatGPT at the moment. I asked him, what is a grill watch? Yeah. A grill watch refers to a highly desired timepiece that a watch enthusiast dreams of owning. This term is borrowed from the concept of the Holy Grail, the Ar in Arthurian legend representing something of great value and often considered unattainable. Grail watch typically has specific characteristics, blah, 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 blah. It might be a vintage Rolex or a Patek, while for others, it could be a unique independent 
brand's creation or a watch with a special complication, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I said, and mm-hmm. this is why I, I went here. I said, what is your grail watch? <laughs> ah. And he said- Is it a he or she? Five yeah. things. <laughs> he, I always say he. He okay. said, these are the five grail watches. One, Rolex Submariner. No. Two, Patek Nautilus. Three, mm-hmm. Royal Oak. Mm-hmm. Four, Speedmaster Professional, aka the Moon Watch, he says. And five, the Vacheron Constantin Overseas. <sighs> so I have apparently two of these Grail watches, and you have one. Mm-hmm. So we already have Grail watches, according to. So uh, between the two of us, we have three out of five. Amazing. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> you could say that actually, since yeah, well, okay, my GMT Master and a Submariner just look so diff- so so similar that it's. Yeah, you could count that one. Yeah, yeah. I think that that is, uh, you know, there are GMT people and then there are sub people. <laughs> yes, and you, there's a big difference because you know, of course, the GMT is dressier. It's got a lot more bling bling. It's got the polished center links, et cetera, et cetera. And the sub is always kind of the dark horse, the uh, toolier one, right? So I think that depends yeah, on the person. It, I think it became blingier and blingier over time. But but yes, yeah. it's still more toolie than a GMT Master 2, for sure. I think so, Also yeah. because uh, no Jubilee bracelet available, these kind of things. And fully brushed mm. bracelet with the with the awesome professional clasp um it's cool anyway point of my story here but by the way does gmt have a professional clasp the locking the locking clasp locking i have yeah the one that oh, yeah, yeah, flips yeah, yeah, down yeah, 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 yeah. it has that's a, the, the double professional fold, clasp yeah, the, the double fold yeah, yeah exactly yeah um okay so that's what they say now between you and me what is your grill watch yeah, that's the thing. I, I mean, because I, I have one, I know what mine is. I always thought that 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 um, you know, overseas is is my Grail watch. Now I have one, so it's like hmm, okay. So that's basically you know done. But then, of course, you are saying, okay, I have the silver dial Vacheron Constant overseas. I wouldn't mind to have the blue dual time, blue dial dual time. I do also really, really like the new green dial rose gold version <laughs> yeah yeah that, that one is nice it's yeah. just unattainable from just for <clears throat> of course financially but then on the other hand you know as you as you know we have our um our old friend or old uh enemy no i can't say enemy or old frenemy um archie luxury who always said if you buy a watch and it doesn't hurt <laughs> it's not worth it right it's yeah gotta absolutely. hurt <laughs> <laughs> it's got to hurt. Otherwise, you're not going to appreciate it. And I can vouch for that. Absolutely. Because uh, every watch that I've bought that didn't hurt, it, I've ended up selling. Every watch yeah. that I kept, at some point, I was like, oof. Yeah. So uh, is it, it too it much? Stays. Should I really? Is it not? Oh, yeah. Is it beyond my so means? I, I agree. Yes, yes, yes. So these are these are the things. So yeah, I think, uh, I'm a, I, th- I think I'm pretty content with being... Um, in the Vacheron camp at the moment. Um, there is one or two Pateks that I like, which are, strangely enough, not really that unattainable because I like the crazier ones. I like the not-so-common ones that everybody wants, so that's pretty good for me. Um, but again, that is, that is uh, with age and maturity, you, you sometimes have a more refined taste and that you can say, like, you know what, actually, I know everybody likes this watch, but very little desire for me to have it, right? Uh, I I have to say once again, I'm completely opposite. As always, I am the basic, the as they say, you know, the, the basic bitch. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not hyped at all because everything I like are the peop- are the things that are absolute classics, right? Mm. I don't like anything that is outlandish, too far out there. I don't do bright colors. I, if you look at my collection, I, I did a little count the other day. It's like four black dials, mm-hmm. three silver dials, and two white dials. Not one color. Um, everything is from a company that is not out there, right? We're talking mm-hmm. Omega, yeah. Rolex, Cartier, Grand Seiko, and JLC. Nothing crazy um, in terms of the, you know, we're not talking Ur work and these, you know, where you know every single watch is ridiculous. 
Um, so these are very, very, you know, well-regarded watches. But at the end of the day, this is, I guess you would say it's, it's the white t-shirt of watches. Mm. Because none of them are going to stand out. Everyone's going to have the same watches as me, which is fine. Absolutely fine. I dress them up with straps and stuff like this. Um, but at the end of the day, I look at the collection as a whole. And I have this very, you know, I hate saying um, that I would buy a watch. Um, how do I say it? I wouldn't buy a watch if it's not something that would stand alone by itself. You know what I mean? Some people will say, well, I already have this complication from this brand. Therefore, I'm going to go and buy something else from another brand. The way I look at it is every single watch in my collection should be a standalone one watch collection. And yeah. it should work in that sense. If it doesn't, that means I was influenced by the previous purchases to buy something else, which I don't want to do. I want to get everything that is there. Everything fulfills its own purpose, if that makes sense. So um, me saying I already have a Speedmaster. Yeah. Therefore, I'm not buying a Daytona wouldn't make sense for me. Yeah. Right. I, I agree because purpose, they're two totally separate watches. Purpose. They do to totally that's my thing with purpose. Purpose is in in this case, watches really don't have that purpose. It's except being a specific kind of man jewelry, to a certain extent. Of course, yeah. I'm still looking at my watch for the time. I'm old school. I actually have my routine. If, if somebody yeah. asks me for the time, I look at my wrist instead of looking at yeah, my phone or computer. But it is redundant. Which wrist? Which wrist? When you double wrist it, which wrist are you looking at? Left. The Apple Watch. No. Always the left. Only if I don't wear a, a, a watch, you know, like in the morning or during the night, then then I look at my right wrist for the Apple Watch. Otherwise, so, I really uh, don't. Use once it again, we're far time. we're off topic. You, but you know, I'm I, actually using the, my Apple Watch because it's synced to the nuclear atomic time to set my real watch. Yes, I I, I have a G Shock next mm -hmm. to my uh, watch box to do the same thing. The, yeah, it's literally the the ninety percent of the time that's all it does. Uh, I wear it ten percent of the time, but <laughs> I have to say that yes, we're off topic, but nonetheless, one of the reasons I stopped wearing an Apple Watch at full time, I should say, stopped mm -hmm. wearing it because now I wear it at night. Right, I stopped wearing it full time because I noticed that I was looking at my right wrist. <gasps> not my left Scandalous. and as soon as i noticed that i said it's gone yeah. it's done yeah yeah, yeah so, i have the, back to grill I have, watches i have the the, the the display switched off so it's not a constantly on i have switched this off so that yeah. i just don't even know but yeah that's not back a bad to idea grill watches. and yeah. and what i what i liked about the the ai responses there was that they both said that it doesn't have to be super expensive expensive or it is no, very yeah. individual it's just the one thing that you aspire um, to and that yeah, can but be... here's the thing. Let me let me put it this way. Some people, I have a friend. His mm. name is JC. Um, I don't I don't think you've met him. May have maybe no, I don't think you have. But nonetheless, he uh, said his Grail watch was always a perpetual calendar. No, oh, yeah, and he didn't care essentially what brand it was from. Mm. Uh, and he ended up getting the Glassute original. Uh, the one with the gray dial. It's an anthracite gray, blackish gray dial. Absolutely insane watch. I mean, I, the Senator, I think it's called the Senator mm. uh, Perpetual Calendar. It has a big date. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. Yeah. I, when he told me, I'm going to get this. And I told him, that's stupid. I don't like it. And then I saw it and then I tried it on and I was like, this is, and it's like 30K, 30,000 dirhams. And you get yourself, this was on a uh, brand new, on uh, one of these, you know, pre-owned, but but, but yes, 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 yes. Yeah. It was brand new, but pre-owned, right? You know, yeah, no, yeah. It, I, I know. box I mean, papers, everything. Right. But it's half of retail yeah, price. Yeah, yeah. Sixty it was at least sixty. But now the thing is, for thirty k to get a perpetual calendar for the less than the price of a Submariner. Yeah. Mm, you know what? This, this is the one thing that I'm always fascinated with because what you just said it's yesterday night I, I was in bed and as you do you scroll to you know to chrono 24 and other places and i saw a watch from a pre-owned dealer not on chrono 24 um which is the frederick constant to beyond perpetual calendar well the frederick constant makes a tourbillon 
Mm. Yeah. I didn't know this. Yeah, they do. Uh, La Jouperie, you know, is part of the family. So they make uh, mm -hmm. also cron um, tourbillons for other companies. So, um, mm, so that was a watch where I thought, wow. And you know the price? $10,000. So it was a bit, yeah, like a, like a Submariner, basically. And you think, so, uh, and this so is you funny get the, a tourbillon, perpetual the calendar. Perpetual, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the picture Ooh, now. Mm, okay, yeah, bad. it's not exactly a, a, a well-decorated movement. No, it isn't. And that's the one thing where I think, hmm, and it's, it has this uh, semi-skeletonized dial, right? So it doesn't... But this is not something they're making still. This no, is, this is it's old, an older right? one, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it wasn't, by the way... Uh, let me see. Somebody was saying it was under eight thousand dollars at the time in two thousand six. No, 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 no. That would have been for a tourbillon. No, no. The perpetual calendar, sure, but oh no, no. sorry, no. sorry. The regular perpetual calendar was under yes. nine thousand. Yes, yes, yes. And then the steel perpetual tourbillon was nineteen thousand. Yeah, so it's fifty percent. Then you could go up to gold, and rose gold was twenty three thousand, yeah. or you can go up to platinum. Yeah. Um. Which was thirty three thousand. Yeah, see, I mean, on the other hand, the Orange, uh, uh, also a Swiss company that makes really hundred percent Swiss made stuff, um, is offering now the Tourbillon too. They have beautiful versions of it. Also, some different gold versions of titanium with meteor dials, with enamel dials, and they claim that their enamel dials fail seventy five percent of the time. Beautiful enamel, right? Absolutely incredible work craftsmanship and really great movements and you you get it off for about ten thousand swiss francs and on in steel and then of course a bit more if you go for gold but uh wow i mean they, they do really really cool designs and i think eventually i need to get an orange but um I have no idea about the pre-owned value of these watches. That's a, that's a challenge. Uh, I don't so, know. so one thing that I was going to tell you, what's, what's two things actually. One, hmm. the the Glassute that I mentioned, the perpetual calendar, yep. super dressy watch, right? Yeah. My, my friend immediately threw it on a rubber strap and that made it so much cooler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so, yeah. You know, that's the cool thing about um, these watches that are meant to be, you know, uh, that can be changed the straps on. You can dress down. Yeah. the watches a lot and, okay uh, it was still yeah. dressy but still it would, mm. but anyway he said he said his now next grail i guess <laughs> see, which see, shows you the, that there is no that's grail the topic um of this he said the episode. next grail yeah. Yeah. is uh going to be a minute repeater and this was before the bel canto Ooh. came out well yeah the bel canto is it is it our and then child. he was like is is it no. but there was another one but, 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 but. there was another one that made a hourly chime I would like the bel canto. Who was it? Do you remember? Ah, uh, no. Uh, but I, I know, I know what you mean. There was, there was another one. Yes, there was a hourly chime watch. I so some aura, something aura. Uh, aura. A H O R A. Um, what was it? The Meister Singer Bell Aura. Oof. Okay, Meister Singer. Yeah, Meister Singer. I have a love hate relationship with. I. Yeah, mm. but they made a Bell Aura, mm. yeah, and uh, that one I don't know is four thousand dollars, and you this was before once again, um, uh, so it's it's six thousand five hundred ninety nine US, but on uh, these gray market they're already down to f under four K, so once again this came before the Bell Canto. Wow. This was the Bell Aura, yeah, and when the Bell Cant and everybody seemed to have forgotten about this by the way, because yeah. when the 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 Bell Canto came out, and I'm like. This isn't new. Why is everyone going nuts? And they're like, well, look at the price. And I'm like, but this price has already been out there. So this is not anything special. Um, so the Meister Singer Bell Aura did everything well before. Yeah. Um, obviously, it did not have the, what's it called? The um, the skeletonized dial where you could see it, the mechanism moving. But yeah, which I think is, is is one of the charms of the Bel Canto. It's it's a, just a beautifully it designed one. It's in, it's just it speaks to all the fields of the watch collector, right? Yeah, like, it does. It does. You watch <laughs> it, it does it. But anyway, he said so that yeah. he was debating for a while whether this counts mm. for this audible watch or whatever. He wanted a, a minute repeater, but obviously he was thinking, is an hour repeater good enough? Um, but at the end of the day, he swore and he said, if Frederick Constant were to create a minute repeater, mm -hmm. 
then that would be it. He would buy that and he'd be done. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Which uh, I'm surprised they haven't. I mean, it just goes to show you, if you can make a tourbillon uh, perpetual calendar, apparently it's still very difficult to make a, you know, a you proper have to, have to, minute repeater. You have to tell our friend Niels, Niels Eggerding, who is the CEO and uh, managing director of, of Frederick Constant. We, we, we interviewed him and he's uh, just a lovely, lovely guy. I mean, and, and I think the new direction that they took and, and the, the and, you know, this, this kind of, retrospective about their watch collection that is maybe a bit too pretentious in their design to be too classical in their design with the technology they did at this i mean i think they are now on a good trajectory of, of how their design language has evolved a bit to be not too i don't like the name that's my only issue yes and Frederic it's... Constant. <laughs> and it's like christopher ward and i told you this i hated christopher ward and then as soon as they dropped the name from the dial yeah the new logo i is, had no is issue so with it much better so yeah. much better yeah i agree so this that. is the, my issue with them as well with Frederic constant is it's too big of a name. Yeah, I think it's it's these. Yeah, well, uh, and it's these made up names. I mean, Christopher Ward at yeah, least yeah, yeah. was trying, a person. Yes. He so actually, Frederick Constant, <laughs> you know, we have we have you know person, Audemars so. Piguet, yeah. and this is just trying to be like this, right? It's trying to do this. Yeah, no, I, anyway, all yeah, right. I, I so think, did I you think answer it, the question of what your grail watch is, by the way? Did yeah, go I, said, so I, far said, top? I said actually it was a watch from Constant overseas um, for for the and longest time. I got one. So now I'm a bit, you know, right now I'm just. In this phase where you're fulfilled, yeah, you're where I'm fulfilled. just happy. I mean, like Good. my last, my last vacation was so deep, relaxing. You know, when you have no phone because you reception. didn't have any watch stress. <laughs> I had no watch stress. No, I was just sitting there watching the animals in Africa and had a wonderful time. It was just perfect. Where I thought, that's it. Life is good. Right. So you know, <laughs> I have no worries. Everything is good. And um, with the watch collection. Of course, I still look at watches because I think, you know, I once described or I always describe my watch collection as an opportunistic mess because yeah. I don't have a plan. A watch speaks to me. It's a good price. I have the budget. I buy it, right? Um, if it doesn't work for me, I don't buy it, right? I mean, if, if it doesn't feel good or so. Sometimes I make mistakes, uh... obviously. I just discussed this recently. Uh, with a friend of mine who said, well, I got offered the next, uh, the delivery in October, the new streamliner with the purple dial. Purple Fumi dial. It does yeah, yeah, so look you, you... really cool, but I told him, I said, look, my experience with, with purple dials, like my Oris, the, the limited edition Oris, yeah, yeah. is just, it, it feels cool, it's new, and then you get, over it very quickly and it becomes something like oh, no i'm not wearing a purple dial to whatever my outfit right now it just feels like a too rare watch to yeah. wear and then they think mm, because it's so hard to combine with anything right it just sticks out so it's a it's a hype color i think to a certain extent it will be popular for a while and then people will get a bit bored of it or so I just yeah. feel it's just, yeah, yeah. it's just too I know what too you niche. mean. I would rather go with the green one, but my friend already uh, has the me, green for one. For me, so. the, the craziest color, I and this has happened to me with every single blue dial I've gotten, I would say blue is the craziest color I would do. And every time I get a blue dial, I always end up selling it. But that's and funny. The reason is I look down at my wrist, I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt or something, and I'm like, it doesn't look good. It doesn't work with mm. you know every color of shirt. And blue is a very, very you know, popular color. Yes. So the fact that that already is clashing for you, yeah. Okay, you are special. Yeah, um, <laughs> but, but you know, I, I would I would entertain blue, a salmon dial. dial. I'll I do a salmon dial or a pink mm. dial. I think I would do that. Mm. Um, the Grand Seiko almost off white pink. I would do. See, I, I, since we are generally talking, what do you think about Tudor with the ceramic, the black ceramic that they brought out for the V Carp racing team, the, the blue, Visa blue Cash dial, Red yeah. Bull? Um, yeah, the blue dial one that the, yesterday. 
they announced that they made they it announced oh, limited available. quantities limited yeah. quantities they said yeah 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 um I you could, could give now, less a uh, crap what they do. No, no, but I no, have no interest no, in that. I have no interest in the pink talking, dial. I have no interest in any of this. Not talking specific, but you just said pink dial. You said the porky. We have a nickname. No, I'm not the, getting a Pepto Bismol pink dial. No, I'm talking <laughs> about it, a it very like well made pink, this, like a salmon or a off white. You know the two black dial, um, the black yeah, sub yeah, dials. Yeah, of course, look a bit it like looks a like a pig. Porky <laughs> snout. Yeah, it does. Anyhow, it does. so. Uh, <laughs> The um That's, uh, the once you've seen it you can't unsee it right <laughs> and now I can see it in my mind's eye and I can't unsee it already so, That's so no what I meant is what do you think about Peppa watch Pig watch watch brands who bring out a very limited watch like saying okay this is a limited watch but you can't have it <laughs> or only very few people get it and then suddenly they say ah oh, you know what kidding everybody can buy it now. That is a bit weird, right? Because for the initial people who bought it thinking they had something really rare, really special, and then suddenly it's like, ah, hmm, no. Well, we had this hmm. discussion, by the way. I told you Ben Clymer hmm. from Hodinki had a one-of-one one piece yes. unique made. He designed it himself. Um, I think it was, a uh, what was it? Um, who was it? Uh, the no, nah, <laughs> I was going to say Maurice Lacroix. No, <laughs> not Maurice Lacroix. What was it? The... Uh, uh, who was the brand? I don't know. Was it? Uh, it was not a. Geez. It was not a Patek. Ben Climber one no, no, of no, no. one watch. Okay. No, he doesn't just have one. That's okay. Uh, he has. Uh, it was from. Uh, JLC maybe. No, 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 no. It was what's it called? The 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 Frederick not Frederick Constant. What's the name of it? The one that we like, that we rated so highly in our thing. <laughs> who was it I don't know is it a oh, specific geez. watchmaker Rex yes, Recep Recepi no 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 the what's it called the one that make they make very plain very uh, nice watches we like them we always uh, ah jeez Louise I'm gonna it's gonna <laughs> bug me now okay um, what about what about um did you see the new resins okay point of watch? ignoring it going back to hold on no, point okay. of story and yes i did see the <laughs> resins i watch point of story is amazing? he bought a piece unique from whoever right yes designed it himself yes and then they decided whatever whoever the brand was i forgot why don't we make a few more of these and sell them and they literally duplicated ben climber's piece unique and it was one of these companies that had never made a watch in sta in stainless steel. So he said, or whatever it was, he said, I want this watch in stainless steel. And they said, oh, we don't do that. And then mm. he convinced them to do it. And then afterwards they said, we might as well make 150 more or something like this. And then they made 150 more, same dial, same everything. And the thing was, Ben Clymer saw this on somebody's wrist. And he's like, wow, that looks really familiar. <laughs> <laughs> they had a, just copied his design and just pumped them out. I think they just so made said, a tiny, tiny change, right, to it or something. Which yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And now his, really, yeah. his piece unique is no longer unique, right? Yeah. And that would really, really piss you off, if, especially if it's your design that's floating around. Yes. I mean, look, talking about Grail watches, um, if you are, let's say, the guy, the Mr. Berkeley, who... Yeah, commissioned, com let, let's yes, say, wait, so commissioned a watch Vacheron. from Vacheron Constantin, and it's the most complicated watch ever made. That's it. That's it. It's it's a it's a pocket watch that you can't put in your pocket because it's about two size of kilos a table. or so. It's it's a big. Let's say it's the size of a hockey puck or something, a bit more. No, it's way bigger. Bigger than that. that. Okay, two hockey pucks, but it is two kilos. It's, it's heavy. It ha but it has every complication you can think of. A couple of watchmakers worked on it for years, and that's it. But but no. I, I looked into this. This is the second one he made. The first one yeah. was the uh, was the Hebrew time or Hebrew calendar, mm. and then the second one was this Chinese calendar. Yeah, because Chinese. So I don't know if, he, if, if Mr. Berkeley is a Chinese yeah. Jew um, or what it is, <laughs> but so, no, why you would need these two things yeah. together? It's just be. I mean, whatever his he is, what he believes in, and whatever that doesn't matter because these are very complicated things to do. That's why you're doing it in watchmaking, right? These I, calendar I, complications, I, it's like <laughs> Easter. There is no Easter watch. If you can crack Easter. Right? I'm not saying that you have to be Christian to do this, 
But if you can crack Easter, because the calculation of how, when Easter is, is not easy to do. Same as you do not have a, a watch that is actually, um, yeah, okay, it depends on the moon sighting, but technically you could make a Ramadan watch that tells you when is Ramadan, but not really happening because it's, you know, these 11 days that is actually moving every year. Um, it's not easy. So these kind of things are just not happening. <laughs> so... So, yeah. uh, so it's it's very hard to do. In I am looking terms. up hmm. Mr. Berkeley, and he is not Chinese. So why he would want a Chinese? <laughs> maybe yeah, he has a ch ch Chinese wife who really wants a, <laughs> wants a Chinese. Uh, maybe, maybe so I much. don't know. But it's a very strange situation. Uh, why? No, why? it's it's just so hard to do. And uh, we saw recently, I think it was um, uh, Moza as well coming up with a Chinese calendar watch for the Chinese New Year. Um, it's a very very hard com uh, complication to to achieve, and. It, don't think many watch companies have done it. I think it's, I, I only know of Vacheron and uh, Moser. Now, hmm. going back to my Grail watch, which we never actually mentioned, um, being that we're this far oh, off yes, topic. Oh, yes, true, true. What is it? Yes, what is, what is it? my Grail watch? And as, as I was saying, my collection and everything in it is very, very simple. Therefore, my Grail watch has to be and should be very, very simple. And it is. And I've mentioned it a million times already, as, as you all know, it is a yellow gold champagne dial day date on the president bracelet. And that would be my grail watch. And that will hopefully at some point come when I'm 50, 60 years old. Um, and that's going to be it. And, and the thing is, I kind of want it new. And that's the problem is, is uh, when something is 120, 130K new, and then secondhand, you're looking at like 40K. It doesn't make logical sense to buy one that's new. <laughs> well, the, the, the 40K ones pre-owned are not the current models, right? No, no, no. They're not current ones. But in essence, they're very, very similar. True. So who knows? I have no idea. But this is what I was looking at. But the problem is I wanted the yellow gold. And then I thought to myself, white gold would also be cool. And then I saw that blue Fume diamond dial and I was like, oh, oh, and it was barely more expensive than the regular one. Mm. I think it was like 20K more and you get a blue Fume dial with the diamond indices. And we're talking baguette diamonds as well. Yeah. Um, so that was a super cool watch. But anyway, I have no idea. I know it's a day date of some variation and probably will end up being the yellow gold because that's the most classic one. And that's it. That is what I think I would end up with. So ah. there you have it. Doesn't have to be complicated. It could just be something that signifies, I don't know, reaching the end. Yeah. And I think the day date does that. Yeah. So I think, I think uh, we have to just quickly go, go back to the, um, the, um, the, the watch from, um, from what is it called? From, from, from Berkeley. Again, this is actually nine centimeters five centimeters high 960 grams i always said two kilos it's actually one kilo so sorry for that and it's um the, the chinese calendar is very hard i think parmigiani florier did it once then grand and petite sonnery 63 different complications i just wanted to get this out the chinese year can have 30 35 353 days but it could also be 385 days and a couple of things in between so the entire year changes and it's it's really complicated so it's not easy to do so but 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 i think from from your grail watch i think it's a bit too easy yeah. i don't care you could, that's you what could, it comes you, down you to you could sell your submariner and get one i i i've said this but here's the thing and i and not, I, I couldn't sell the submariner I, or i i wouldn't sell the submariner i could sell a few watches and get it even get a brand new one right yes i have you know, I could sell the whole lot and end up with that diamond baguette dial white gold fume day date mm. as my only watch. But it's not the same because at the end of the day, you want the other watches as well. Yeah, that depends. Right? right? You this want the, the grail watch in addition to the other things, in my opinion, right? I would want everything. But this is what, and what this is this is what what actually the grail watch is supposed to be, for example. It should be the one that rules them all, right? Just no, the, no, it's the last watch that you ever need or want. 
It's not yeah, your which one makes watch collection. Everything else redundant because you don't no, no, because it, I think most people watch. wouldn't wear the Grail watch. You wouldn't no, wear the Grail watch ridiculous. to go swimming in. Yeah. So the whole point is, you still need your collection, but then you'd want the Grail watch at the very, very end, just to say, "I'm done." Everyone can, you know, go choke on a, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm out of here. You know, that's okay. what it comes down to. The um, mic that's drop what watch. I think the Grail watch is, the mic drop watch. Exactly. Mm. And then um, I could never again do a podcast and never again open up a watch website. Mm. And I'm just going to be happy in my own little bubble. <laughs> yeah, maybe that just made me so happy. Since there was no cell phone doing... reception, there was no there was no Instagram, there was no Chrono Twenty Four, there yeah. was nothing just to get me. You could do this by yourself as well. Get my going, uh, or so, like Jomo. Like, yeah, I think I think this is no. But the, we, we get bombarded. <laughs> um, we get bombarded with all of this stuff, and I just watched. Uh, uh, I don't know what I watched, but somebody said, rightfully so, we're bombarded with all of these watches around us all the time, yeah. and. You don't have to buy every single one. You could like a watch you can for what it is. You can love a watch without ever having the desire say, to own it. I still don't want it. Yes. I don't need it. Yes. And that, I think, is true You know, watch passion, is to say, wow, this is super cool. I will never own it. I will never even try to buy one. Yep, exactly. Um, and I think that's absolutely right. I'm okay with that. This is the, this is the one thing when 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 we always hear this in the watch collecting. If it just had uh, you know two two millimeters smaller, if it just had the date, if it didn't have the date, if it had the date at three, if it had the date at six, then I would buy As it. As Max immediately. Verstappen so famously said, <laughs> "If my mom had balls." He would be my dad, she would <laughs> so be my or dad, she yeah. would be my dad. Yeah. So this is exactly what we're talking about. If, 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 then you're not talking about the same watch. Once again, I said yes, this about the, the FXD. It's too big. It's too big. But that is what the FXD is. It needs to be big to fulfill its purpose. Yes. And, and that's the way watches are. And this is the thing. It's, it's, it's. I am totally with you. There's so many watches that I absolutely adore. I love. I will never. I, I don't aspire to own them. At all, some of them might be very uh, affordable. Even might some might definitely in my in my reach, but I just don't want to own them. But I love them. I think they are brilliant watches. Not for me. Maybe yeah. they don't fit me. Maybe their material I don't like. It doesn't matter. But it's it's just something where I, yeah. think, I love the watch for what it is. Like this this Berkeley watch. I think this is. How can you not love this watch? It's a. It's two thousand five hundred parts. Plus two, plus minus two seconds a day with 63 complications, grand sonnery, petite sonnery, and anything you can throw at it, it has it, right? S double split chronograph, whatever you want, it's, it has it. It's there, yeah. And you think, um, yeah, how can Imagine you Imagine getting that serviced. <laughs> you walk into the freaking <laughs> Vashran boutique. Yeah, it's not keeping time. <laughs> Can you regulate it for me? Mm, yeah, I think that's 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 a challenge. But it's um, I don't even know what's the power reserve of that thing, which is probably also pretty good. Um, I think they just put everything, and this is what I think. Um, when 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 people talk about the holy trinity of watchmaking, and a lot of people said, you know what, they should replace Vajon Constantin with uh, Lange and Söhne or something, and you think. Yes, Lange and Söhne is great, but first of all, they're not Swiss, so you can't put them in the Swiss list. Second, look at what they still do. Even AP and Patek and Vacheron Constantin, which nobody else can do, right? Maybe some independent watchmakers who, who can actually do these kind of watches. But generally, there is not many watch ma uh, manufacturers in the world who can actually produce these kind of quality watches that yeah. so many of us think are grail watches. Um, and, and I think there's other brands that should be on that list as well, but they're not. So who cares? Yep. And, and I think I've never more, I should say more uh, clearly had this experience than when I tried on the Moser Streamliner enamel dial, 39 mm. When I tried that on, I was like, I love it. I don't want to take it off. Yeah, totally. Would I buy one? No. Yeah. Uh, but it was awesome and I loved everything about it, mm. but it just, it wouldn't be something that I wear. It just wouldn't be for me. And that's the thing is mm. I understood that. I didn't want to take it off anyway because it was so cool and it was so awesome to look at, but 
and it fit lovely. I had no issues with the size. Everything was perfect. But I'm like, yeah, would I trade everything for this? Would I take a day, a day date over that? Of course I would. I'd still take the day date. Yeah. This, the thing is, the thing is, for example, when I sold my Moza dual time, which I, I love the watch, right? But I felt when I now look back at the two watches that replaced it, right? My IWC Mark 20 and the Gerard Perigo Laureato in ceramic. I'm so content with these two. I love them both. Yep. Um, I love the Moza, but I'm happy that I do have these two watches now. They bring me probably a bit more, more joy. joy than than the Moza by itself. Um, for the time, I enjoyed the Moza a lot. So I think I still li like it and I love it, but um, it was time to move on. So it's a good thing. Yep, there you go. Plus, I had, and I on had that a very, very important thing. My wife didn't like it, the Moza. So she always said, like, I don't uh, understand why you like that watch. And I was like, yeah, well, you don't have to wear it. So <laughs> I don't think my wife hates any of my watches. There was definitely was no times hate. where she like, didn't like... Don't no, no, no. There was times when my like wife it. didn't like certain watches, but I think currently she, I'm going to ask her this after we're oh, done yeah. here, but I think, I think she, she has no issues. And I told her yesterday, I'm thinking about selling the date just, and she said, no, you can't sell that. <laughs> so, but, but I'm with you there. The date, day date is a lovely watch. It's a beautiful watch. Uh, it's a worthy of a gray watch status for sure. And, um, well, that's what it is, right? For hmm. most people, it is. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, do you recall this was Jack Forster's? Grill watch? Yeah. And Jack Forster, who could have anything in the world, essentially. I don't know how his finances some... work, but... <laughs> no, 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 but that is fine. But I'm saying he he had access, we'll put it that way, had access to everything in the world, right? At his disposal yeah, at least to had, try had on, tried. check out. Yes, he yes, know... yes. And remember, a Grail watch is not something that you might ever get. And so he could have said, my Grail watch is blah, 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 blah. And he knew he would never get it, but it still could have been his Grail watch. Yes. But he always said day date. And he didn't buy his own day date. Remember, he was gifted it from Ben Clymer when he left Hodinki. Mm -hmm. Which also I think is a super cool, you know, gesture, right? Yep. Um also, you know else who who's whose else is whose else is Grill Watch the president or the, the Rolex president was the day date. Um uh what's his name from uh, Fratello? Patrick Bateman. RJ. Oh, RJ. RJ. Oh, no, sorry, Fratello. Yeah, of course. He also said the same thing. He said, that is my grill watch. He's a freaking, you know, he wrote the book on Speedmaster. Mm -hmm. And he's like, my, my, my. <laughs> he and wants he to does my have the, 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 what is it? He the, just the, bought it. The he wrote a whole thing no, about it. No, but he has the Speedmaster in gold. The one with the green yes, dial. Yes, he does. Right? And yeah. he still said he wanted the day date. Yeah, crazy. As his like end all be all watch. And he said, I felt... Uh, in his, he wrote this up, by the way, and about how he went and bought it and everything, um, because he didn't know which one he wanted, which reference, etc. Um, and he ended up saying, uh, he even though he had all the gold watches, he had the gold speedy, right? Yeah. He said, "I didn't feel that I earned the day date yet." Oh. And apparently, this is a watch that you have to earn at some point. Okay. It's not like it's I have the money to buy it. No, because he said mm. I had the money to buy it. I just didn't feel worthy of it yet. Okay, which is that that's crazy to think. Once again, yeah, but that's that's the also grill watch that, is beyond money. And also, is 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 it's like a bit of self psychology to just keep yourself from making um, anything too rash. You're saying like, okay, no, this is the watch. This will be a watch that will be so important for me. I have to wait for a specific moment or achievement in time to then buy it and yeah. reward myself with it or whatever it might be. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's cool. That's cool. Mm. And good on that him. on that bombshell, I think it's time. We are under one minute and 30 seconds under time. Yee, Ladies and gentlemen, the it. loom plotters have done it. All right. <laughs> And this guy. Thanks for listening. Bye bye.